Hey everybody, something weird's going on here. So I'm in my house playing with this ball on a string. You can see it's just a spherical ball here. But what's really weird is look at the shadow behind me. So this is the shadow of the ball. You can see it's this round shadow, but as I move it a little further away from the wall, it starts to look like a star, doesn't it? Look at that. The shadow right there behind me from this ball looks like a star. So this is obviously a sphere here, but how am I getting a star shadow? There may be something in this house trying to tell me something. Okay, it's the next day here in my garage and I think something even weirder is going on now. So here's the shadow of my ball. You can see it's a sphere right against the wall, but as I move it further away from the wall, look what that forms, a J. Doesn't that look like a J to you? <laughs> How on earth is this the shadow of the ball on the wall? <laughs> Look at that, obviously forms this J. Try it with a little bit different size ball hair and the same thing, it's a J. So maybe somebody's trying to communicate with me through shadows. There's a littler sphere, also forms a J here. Okay, so let's try to figure out what is going on here. How is it that I'm forming the shadow of a J with the form of a sphere here? So what is actually going on here is not some evil spirit playing with the shadows in my room, but it's actually what's called a reverse pinhole camera. Let me show you how it works. So in order to understand what a reverse pinhole camera is, let me explain what a pinhole camera is first. Let me show you what it looks like if I shine the light through this tiny little hole that I poked here. Here's my light shining on it, and let's look behind the board on the wall. You can see that there's a J here. You can see that this is obviously a dot here, but the light shining through that dot doesn't look like a dot, it looks like a J. So something odd is going on here. In fact, look what happens when I just make a tiny little hole with my finger here. Look at that. <laughs> So what a pinhole camera does is it preserves the image of the source light. Now this is also the same thing that happens when there's a solar eclipse. A few years ago I got to see a total solar eclipse near me, it was amazing. And what was really cool about that is when you formed little tiny holes or a shadow with your hand, what you saw on the ground was an image of the eclipse. And the reason it did that is basically because you were making tiny pinhole cameras. See the little eclipse in my the middle of my hand there. So how a pinhole camera works is it only lets through light at a specific angle depending on the location on the backdrop. So what that does is it preserves the location of the incoming light. So for example, this image of the balloon here, you can see that if you just trace that ray of light coming from the top of the balloon, the only way it can enter the box, it can't go straight, it has to go at that specific angle and hit the bottom of the box directly in that location. And same with the bottom of the balloon, the bottom of the balloon has to go at that specific angle and it can only hit that specific part of the screen on the back there. And so what that does is it actually forms an image on the backdrop there. In fact, that's one of the ways how our eyes work. The reason we have a small little pupil is to make a pinhole camera so it preserves the location of the light coming in so it forms an image as opposed to just a blurry background like this. So that's what a pinhole camera is. So what is a reverse pinhole camera? Well basically, let's say we have that pinhole camera but instead of a hole, we make that hole a small ball and open everything else up. And what's amazing about that is it still works the same way. It preserves the angle of the incoming light, but instead of lighting up the specific image, it makes a reverse image of it. So basically it makes a shadow in the shape of the light source. So for example, the same image as before, imagine that dot is now a ball and the front of that box is now open. So now light from everywhere on the balloon can hit the backdrop. So the backdrop is now lit up 
but the part where the balloon is there, that's the part that gets blocked because those light rays from the top of the balloon and the bottom of the balloon are now getting blocked by that ball right there. And so it blocks all of the light in the shape of that light source. And so the reverse pinhole camera is exactly that. Instead of getting an image of the light source, you get a reverse image of the light source. Uh, basically, it turns the light source into a shadow, which is really cool. So what did my light source actually look like to get a star and a J? I just have a cutout of a star. And then I have a cutout of a J. But what's interesting, in order to get a shadow that looked like a J, I had to have my light source reversed and flipped the mirror image. That's because if you trace the rays coming in, you'll notice that it flips the image upside down and it also mirrors it. That's actually the same thing that happens on our eyes too. So the image hitting the back of our retina is actually a flipped image and our brain flips it the right way. So everything that we're actually seeing is really upside down and our brain turns it right side up so it seems right side up. So if you do want to make a reverse pinhole camera, it's a pretty easy setup. So you need a diffuse source of light. So basically you need the light evenly spread out going all directions. You can't just use a flashlight or something. So you can just use a white piece of paper with a light illuminating behind it, and then you can cut out whatever image you want. And then you just use a ball on a string, and it kind of doesn't matter the size of the ball. And then basically we're about six feet from the back wall here, and you can see that it forms this perfect image of a J as the shadow. So here's the pinhole version, and then the reverse pinhole. Okay everyone, mystery solved. Thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't seen the Action Lab subscription boxes. It's a vacuum chamber box and the second box is a self-pouring fluid box, which is pretty cool. And if you haven't subscribed, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video is out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.